The largest tech companies in the world are hiring 50% fewer college graduates today than in 2019. So the bar to enter tech has significantly risen. Entry level roles now require years of experience. Resumes need to be stacked with AI projects just to land an interview. And I have never seen a job market this bad. AI is making things worse and it's putting all the pressure on junior software developers. And so in this video, I'm gonna break down how these crazy expectations for junior developers came about, but more importantly, how you can navigate this new reality. It's not your fault the market's like this, it's really not fair. Thankfully, there are some tactics that I have for you guys to not just meet, but beat these crazy expectations and thrive in this new world as a junior developer. I hope you're ready for it, so sit back, relax, and let's get started. When I started computer science in 2019, the tech world looked completely different. Everyone got internships, recruiters were everywhere, you show up at a career fair and you'd walk away with interviews. People were bagging Amazon and Meta jobs like it was nothing, because it was. The expectations were low and simple, do a few projects, practice leap code, you were hired. Then 2020 hit and the global pandemic hurt young software engineers like crazy. Internships canceled overnight. One of my friends had her 12 week internship cut down to eight weeks with a 50% pay reduction. Companies panicked and they froze hiring. But in 2021, surprisingly, tech was booming again. The US government pumped money into the economy and all of a sudden tech was hiring at full force. This was actually peak chaos in a good way for junior developers to the point where some of my friends completely failed interviews and then proceeded to land the job anyways. If you knew how to code and could breathe, you were pretty much guaranteed a job, very, very low expectations. And as a result of all of this, many people signed up for computer science in college because it proved to be a very lucrative degree. And then came 2022, and this is what I call the start of the fall of the junior software developer. Software engineering hiring hit a standstill that fall. Fame companies were starting to lay off thousands of engineers. Only exceptional software engineers that met high expectations were getting hired or even offered a second round interview. At the same time, the people who joined computer science back in 2019 and 2020 were graduating into a market with no entry level tech jobs and students entered the summers with no internships. Then moving into 2023 and 2024, we had the perfect storm. Hundreds of thousands of software developers got laid off and now they were competing with waves and waves of new grads for the shrinking number of junior developer jobs. It was bad. And then AI arrived and things got even harder since it raised expectations even more from young engineers. And so if you're an aspiring junior developer out there, please hear me out clearly. You are not the problem. You are not stupid. You are not not cut out for tech. And the people who constantly tell you that tech is so easy were operating in a completely different market. They broke into tech during a time when expectations and competitions were so low and nothing like what you're facing today. You on the other hand, my friends, unfortunately have been thrown into a five level expectation pressure chamber this early in your career. But trust me on this, once you understand the different layers of pressure you're facing, the playing field becomes way clearer. You go from feeling lost to seeing a clear path of how to win in this tough tech market. So let's break it down. First, opportunity pressure. Software developer jobs today are down massively compared to years ago. Layoffs, hiring freezes, and AI productivity gains have hit entry-level roles the hardest. Companies like Salesforce announced that they weren't hiring any software engineers this year because of their AI tool agent force. And if you look at college degrees, computer engineering and computer science have an unemployment rate of 7.5 and 6.1%, which is the third and seventh highest amongst all college majors. So traditional regular software engineering jobs are down and I'm using the word regular for a reason. We'll come back to it in a bit. Second layer is the AI exoskeleton pressure. Some people say, oh no, AI is going to take over my job. But what the real threat is, is the new generation of junior developers that are agent first. These are the people that have already mastered AI coding tools like Cursor, Windsurf, and GitHub Copilot. These people can produce work at 10x the speed and 10x the output of a normal junior developer. How can anyone work 10x the regular developer? Well, I recently talked to a startup founder who told me he didn't need to hire any engineers on their team except for one because the one they hired is so skilled with Cursor, the AI coding tool, so skilled that that engineer effectively was worth a whole team of engineers in terms of output. So you're not just competing against other humans anymore, you're competing against other humans that are AI powered with AI exoskeleton. 
But even deeper than that is the next layer, what I call the triple learning curve pressure. This one is brutal. So when you join a company as a junior engineer, you're typically juggling two giant learning curves. Curve A is learning the art of software engineering, things like Git, GitHub, Jira, general software engineering tools. Curve B is learning your company's technology, tech stack, and code base. Like you learn, your team codes in React.js, and here's where the code base is, here's how it shows up in the product, you learn the tech workflow. But now there's a third learning curve, which is learning how to adopt AI in your development development workflows. The real pressure here comes in the balance, because if you still code manually, the old way, you're slower than everyone, but if you only rely on AI for coding, you don't learn anything and you can't accomplish anything in the first two learning curves. And to add even more pressure to the mix, the fourth layer is the grunt work pressure. The tasks junior engineers were traditionally given, like documentation or small debugging, AI can do them better and faster. So software managers now want juniors who can architect systems, think critically, own major components, communicate and work like senior engineers. So the expectations went from fix a small bug to do senior level work, get to entry level pay. Once again, I'm not trying to scare you, but we just must understand the problem before talking about the solutions. Really quick, if you want to get ahead of 99% of software engineers, you might need this. My room used to look like this. Harsh overhead lights, terrible desk shadows. Literally one time I was debugging this super annoying JavaScript callback function issue. It was late at night and my screen was the only bright thing in my room. After an hour, my eyes were on fire. I wasn't even tired. I just couldn't look at my screen anymore. Then I found these guys. So when I turn this dial, the screen bar Halo 2 lights my desk without touching my monitor. No reflections, no strain, just exactly what I need to think and code clearly. Especially in winter when the sun's down by like 4 p.m., this screen bar was a real game changer. Plus, Forbes studies have shown that lighting impacts people's mental and emotional well-being. So now the screen bar brings focus, clarity, and energy to my workspace, which actually helps me stay motivated even if I'm debugging code at 3 a.m. Plus, it's wireless. I can put this anywhere, keeping my setup as clean as possible. So if you've ever stayed up late at night, squinting at your monitor and regretting career choices, trust me, you don't need to quit your job. You just need better lighting. Be sure to check out the screen bar Halo 2, link in description. And now back to the video. The final layer of pressure is the credential pressure. 20 years ago, having a computer science degree made you stand out. Even five years ago, it was pretty good. Today, it barely gets you in the door because the supply of people who are qualified on paper has exploded. It's not really impressive if you know how to code. It's like saying, I know how to tie my shoes. Like, cool. Coding is so common now, it's not really a high value skill anymore. All right, so the pressure and expectations are very high. And once again, I don't mean to scare you, I just want to be real with you. Because truthfully, despite all this pressure, software engineering is still one of the best careers to get into. Over these last few years, I've traveled around, interviewed many tech CEOs, and they've all confirmed to me that the future of software engineering is bright, but the rules have significantly changed. And this exact rule change and shift has created a huge mismatch between the skills aspiring developers are learning and the skills the industry needs. And so if you wanna make it out of this pressure chamber and land a job in tech, here are four rule changes you must adopt. Coming in at number four is a shift from abstraction to fundamentals. And this is actually coming from my conversation with the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella. If I'm a beginner, just wanna break into tech, What's your number one piece of advice? Just getting real fundamentals on sort of software. If you're a software engineer, I think still matters a lot. To me, having the ability to think computationally. So sometimes we get too romantic and caught up with coding languages like Python, Java, JavaScript, just because we have been using them for a while. But when it comes in this world where AI is a disruptor, the best way to break into tech is to build strong software fundamentals. Because understanding how systems work make you a better software architect even when AI handles the code. And so what that means is before you create your next new coding project, you should architect the entire system beforehand. This is how the backend structuring is gonna look. This is the database schema. Here's how the UI is gonna look. I'm gonna use a red and green color scheme. And within the code base, I'm gonna create a scaffold folding structure to organize my project files and test files accordingly. Basically, overall, think more than just the exact code that you're writing, but rather the infrastructure and architecture you're writing it around. 
And this will make you a strong engineer, especially in the age of AI where you're using a lot of prompts and context. Coming in at number three, we got a huge shift from basic computer science to general software mini founders. So you know how I mentioned that a lot of regular software jobs are down? Well, it's because tech companies are looking for a new profile of software engineers. So in a tech company, you basically have a bunch of different people. Backend software engineers who code out APIs, designers who create UI mockups, front-end engineers, fake engineers, engineers, sorry, had to, who code out the UI, product managers that set expectations and work with customers. Nowadays, the most successful software developers can do all of it by developing AI agents to write out the code for you, to build mockups, to design APIs. So you as a software engineer need to be able to do a whole team's worth of work. Far too many people nowadays only know how to code and it's significantly limiting you. And if you're confused or overwhelmed, start off very simple. It could be a to-do list app that you build out very elaborate but efficiently because you deployed AI agents that did all the UI backend design tasks. Once you're comfortable with basic projects, take it to the next level. Surf for technological problems in society and build solutions. You know how many brick and mortar stores still use manual spreadsheets to track inventory? Install AI automations and earn that experience showcase that you can build end-to-end -end projects like with front-end, back-end product and design. That like holistic knowledge, prove that. And if you're looking for project ideas right now beyond all of this, check out this free website by Project Pro. It has AI projects for beginners, intermediate, and advanced. Things like resume parsers, autocorrect tools, and creating your own chatbot. And it even shows you what tools and libraries to use, so this way you can actually stand out significantly on your resume. Rule change number two is stop applying, start peacocking. Everyone is applying to jobs right now, millions and millions of desperate candidates, but what if you could flip the switch? Instead of you applying to jobs, what if you could get recruiters desperate to hire you? And that's where we come to peacocking. A peacock in nature spreads its feathers and it makes it impossible to ignore. It flaunts its feathers, people are mesmerized, take pictures, and you can really see its beautiful value. Similarly, I want you to flaunt your feathers and show off your experience, skills, and projects to attract recruiters to you. Sounds pretty good, right? But in order to achieve this, you need to be easily discoverable online. For example, all the amazing AI projects you should have created by now, you need to post about it on LinkedIn and Twitter. And it's amazing how fast this actually works. One of my friends recently started posting machine learning content on LinkedIn, and he had only five followers and his post got only a few hundred views, but by just his third day of posting, a recruiter reached out to him asking him if he wanted to interview for a machine learning position at their company. So instead of wasting time in the huge application pool like everyone else, he just made a few LinkedIn posts and now he has recruiters who are desperate for him. And the same thing happens with me on an almost daily basis. I get contacted by recruiters on LinkedIn because I post there and have a large presence. So this is a golden opportunity to get employed. Please just start flaunt your feathers and tag me on your first post. Coming in at rule number one is to get dangerous with AI. Even if you just use ChatGPT, I want you to become an expert. Become AI native. Find out what tools are good in what circumstances and find ways to improve your productivity. For example, on my laptop, I don't even use the keyboard anymore. I don't even type anything anymore. I just use this tool called Whisperflow that transcribes everything I speak into documents instantly. Because I found a problem in myself. I talk and think way faster than I can type. And so I was losing productivity by actually physically typing things out. And so now, I save so much time. I just press one button, talk, and everything is captured on my laptop, no issues. And over time, I will be able to work faster and output more than people who are still manually typing. And so think bigger. In your own life, can you set up AI automation workflows to, for example, once you receive an email, can you have it summarize and respond on your behalf without you lifting a finger? Can you make your life more efficient with AI? Then once you're an AI automation expert, take this expertise and bring it to organizations and prove your your skills, trust me, once they see that, they will be begging to hire you. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that I've been able to calm your pressures and worries in this high expectation market. But if you do have any concerns, please let me know. I read all my comments. And if you're interested in my absolutely free tech newsletter, link will be down below in the description. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are interested in what software engineers do on a day-to-day -day basis, you might want to watch this video right here.